Welcome back to the Nivo Flip. This is episode 31 and we ended the last episode, episode 30, on a huge success for, because we made the machine flip the very first page in its existence. But uh, it was uh, 2 a.m. and 36 minutes when we accomplished that, so we were all super tired and we basically ended the day there. During this super long night session we realized that the separate driver on here is actually not powerful enough and misses some important features. So I got a new one, it's called a 36V4 from Pololu. Um, and we'll put that in today and see if we can reproduce the, uh, the success of episode 30 where we then flip the page in the end. That's today's goal and let's get rolling and get out this old separate driver and put in the new one. So, um, we, the first step we have to do here is take the existing Arduino shield off. Um, the shield form factor is a bit of a blessing and a curse. The curse in this case is that all of the pins run through the shield, so when we remove them we have to take a photograph, which I've done off camera, uh, making a reference of where everything plugs in. Because when I pull this off, I have to take everything out and now I don't know where anything goes. So this is the stepper, this is the stepper motor power and the signal wire is going directly to the stepper motor. These are screwed in because they carry quite a bit of power. Now I'm not worrying about the order of these cables in this particular case because I know that the new driver probably isn't going to sequence them the same way. So in this particular case I don't care. The power cables are labelled with colour, so working out which is which should be relatively easy. Red is power as always and black is ground. And with that, the, step, the uh, old driver comes free. Now the Arduino's come with it, so we just have to unplug it like that and put the Arduino back. Now we refer back to our photograph that we took to put all the original pictures, uh, sorry, all the original cables back where they belong. Where we wipe back up. Only that was very quick, I have to say. Yeah. Do we have a sane spot with, without needing to lengthen all the cables where the stepper driver could go? The new one. Hmm. Uh, personally, I... I would put the stepper driver here. Uh, yeah, but can all that the... visible on camera? At which point, these cables can come around quite easily. Yes, they can come around. That's good. But the power cables. The are power cables short. are probably going to have to be extended. That's not a big deal. Yeah, no, like, this is the last project that uses more than one 12-volt consumer, where I'm not going, like, I should have put in some power rails for, for distribution of the 12-volt stuff. I didn't. Mm. I personally would have recommended building this onto a PCB. But, uh... Yeah, I'm totally aware that you recommended putting this on a PCB, so, uh, and we discussed this in great detail. The question came up again, why is this not a custom PCB? Why aren't all these individual bits and bobs on a PCB? And the argument for that, I think, is that it's easy to reproduce if you don't have to have a PCB that you need to populate with parts that you can only buy from certain, uh, <clears throat> what's it called? Certain vendors. Mauser or, uh, or DigiKey or any of those, those big vendors. But please explain why it would be a lot better and less painful to have actually a PCB for this. Well, from a manufacturing, from a design perspective, it would be a lot easier to do a PCB. Um, there's be a lot less wires involved, which means that it's a one one drop in component solution for all of the control electronics. Um, it's gonna that would make it more reliable, more durable, easier for the person who's assembling the machine because there'll be less cables involved, less places for mistakes to crop in. PCBs can still be done in open source, but obviously there's the added difficulty that the user has to, uh, oh, sorry, that, that someone wishing to reproduce this machine has to go manufacture the PCB themselves. The problem is that's not the dirty word it used to be anymore. Um, PCB manufacturers are nearly accessible all the way down to high school students. Now, it's really inexpensive to get them from China. The pain is waiting a week or two for them to arrive. By now there are even YouTubers who are sponsored by PCB manufacturers. Yeah, there are indeed YouTubers that are sponsored. Um, this video is not sponsored by JLC or PCBWay, but it should be. <laughs> uh, 
Um, personally, I, I, I heartily and non-sponsoredly recommend JLCPCB. They do PCBs for two, two dollars, two dollars for five. But the thing is, you, you, you then need to be able to SMD solder. Uh, you need to be, you, you're going to buy a whole lot more components that, than you're going to need because most components you can't can't get in one Ooh. only, or you buy like ten of them and then you don't need the other nine. And also, uh, it's difficult to solder PCBs, well, in my opinion. That's that's what a lot of people have have experience remember, but that's just simply not true anymore. Uh, SMD soldering is something that a lot of people are scared of, so for some legitimate reasons and some illegitimate ones. It's n SMD soldering is something that scares a lot of people because it's not taught, but there are increasingly more and more resources available. But what everyone forgets is that circuit boards only have to have SMD components on them if you use SMD components. You can The design that we're building here today with... Reasonable confidence, I believe, you could build with all through hull parts. And that's 1980s soldering technology. And any hobbyist with a soldering iron can take a, a, a hobbyist board from Mauser or Reichelt or Conrad, where they sell these hobby kits, and put it together in an afternoon. And this would be no different. Is you're talking about... Large through hole components. I believe this is in frame. The uh, the it's CPU uh, ah the CPU on the Arduino is a great example. It's a big chip. It's got big pins. Yeah. It looks terrifying to solder, but when you insert it into a well made board, the board is engineered from the ground up to stop you messing up. That green plastic layer we put on circuit boards is a piece of plastic that's designed to stop metal attaching to it. So when you solder, the solder wants to go on the pin and not between them. And that makes your life so much easier. So soldering through-hole components, and you only need to use through-hole components, can be very accessible to anyone from the age of 10 up. I mean, they teach through-hole soldering in schools, okay. at least in my country. Uh, they don't uh, uh, over here in Germany. In 2016, I made the decision to just use off-the-shelf components so they are kind of plugged together. Uh, to keep down the amount of tools, to, uh, to keep down the amount of knowledge that someone needs to have uh, to build uh, such a machine as kind of like, like a radical uh, theme throughout the design that this, this was the first optimization I took with every design decision that it has to be as simple as conceivable, but at least by me, as simple as possible um, for, uh, to reproduce this machine. And um, we are now experiencing a lot of pain with electronics, which is why the discussion of having a custom-made PCB has been coming up, at least between Segfault and me, I mean, with the last sessions. So maybe you are also have an opinion on this, and please put your uh, answer down there. Uh, making a PCB board imposes a lot of challenges, uh, like from my st standpoint of possibly uh, 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 maybe uh, offering kits of this machine in the future. So um, adding a PCB to that thing to provide to sell is complicated because of this many other small parts. But I see its merits. It, it, there are also some very strong points for it. I think one of the things to consider is um, for going from scratch uh, to build this machine, you need to very accurately cut all the wood pieces which means you need accurate woodworking skills. Um, That's the nice thing about the wood design, that, that you actually don't need to have these woodworking skills because this cut, for example, that you pointed out, yeah. doesn't have to be accurate at all. Like You can be far off. Sure. Um, what has to be accurate is this cut, but that cut in this piece, that cut is made by your um, wood shop. Like yep. There's a cut list and it's all rectangular squares but and having, there are only very little parts that require any kind of pre precision. But having access to a wood shop, I don't think it's a huge leap of faith to ask uh, to ask people to buy a 5 euro soldering iron. Um, as for getting components, um, you can purchase parts by the one in the modern world of modern logistics. Which is, it's not the most economic way of doing it. But you can. Uh, but it's it's available. It's there, and it's quite consumer friendly. So let's let's say all, uh, some people say that it would be a great idea to have a PCB and put all of this stuff on here in on that PCB. Are you still willing to make it to design it? I can't see why not. Say that again to the camera. Can't see why I wouldn't be willing to make it. Okay. Um, 
what I'd want to hear from you, the audience, is uh, how much experience you have with soldering and how much uh, and how much help and 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 tutorial you'll need in assembling and, and putting it together yourselves and what do you want from us do you want assembled pcbs do you want the blank pcb and the parts in a bag or are you happy to go out and get your uh, how, happy to go out and source the components yourself yeah that's and all of the, and all of these options also have have to be discussed on on our side of things because they come with a lot of work uh, like some more than others there's obviously a cost involved in manu manufacturing pcbs but there's also design implications if you're going to make man bulk, if you're making one yourself on your kitchen table it's a different process to manufacturing them by the hundred in a factory yes and for example making this machine super silent is actually possible with a custom pcb we could put on in this case, we could put one of those fancy dynamic drivers on the PCB, which would allow us to drive the sepper very, very silently, and right now it's rather noisy. Uh, and there are just no modules available in the market that have the dynamic driver and MOSFETs for the stepper driver all uh, built in one. They are available, but they are really expensive, like saying 250, 300 euros just for the module, and that's certainly not an option for us. Yeah, I mean one of the things to consider moving from these modules to a custom PCB is that there's cost involved for us in terms of time, in terms of engineering, in terms of getting access to parts and prototyping. So this is going to have an impact on the ultimate cost of the machine. In certainly, some way or another. certainly, it ha it will have an impact. Yes, also on our budget uh, right now. Mm. By the way, thanks Wikimedia for paying for all the parts so far that we have been using for this machine. And thanks for Seabase, thanks to Seabase for uh, hosting the project on board. And thanks to Kados for uh, uh, yeah buying this huge CNC mill that we can use to make all the woodcuts for you in a very precise fashion. Okay, now you understand a bit more behind the thought process. Put Please do put your opinion regarding custom PCB or custom off-the-shelf modules no, consumer off the shelf modules like this uh, down there, and let's get on with uh, uh, yeah, re rewiring this let's separate driver and put it in. Okay. We'll lengthen some power cables off camera. It makes no sense to bore you with that. Uh, so, we've lengthened the cables off camera. Um, boring operations, we've saved your time. But now we're ready to mount these, uh, the new stepper driver in its new home, which is going to be about here. Uh, we, the only thing we need to do right now is screw it down, hook the cables, these cables up, and then figure out how we're going to connect it to the Arduino. Awesome, let's do that. Okay, and that is an update, that is an installed uh, stepper driver. I'm not 100% happy with that, but we're using bits of cable we have available to us at the moment, so there's not a lot we can do. Let's get this screwed in. Now, for reducing the amount of tension, I'm actually going to screw this in at a 45 degree angle. Just like a 10 degree angle, but okay. That's 45 degrees to the other board. Nah. <laughs> I'm not that kind of engineer. Now we have to hook it up to the Arduino. In the break, we have been ex uh, we've been uh, investigating how to hook up this uh, stepper driver to the Arduino. Now, there's a bit of a difference between the old shield stepper driver and the new one. The first difference is this is in a shield form factor. The shield does all the connections for us, so we just drop it on and no and no fuss, it's already connected. Uh, this isn't, so we need to actually decide where we're going to connect everything. The other major difference is the existing stepper driver was a dumb one, um, which meant that we simply gave it impulses from the Arduino, and those instructed it to move its outputs high and low, which meant that we had to do all of the motor sequencing in software. This is a smart stepper driver, which means that we actually talk to it through a serial interface. In this case, we're using SPI, which is what supported, which is the only interface supported by this driver. Um, SPI is available on the Mozzie and Miso pins of the Arduino, which are pins uh, 11 to 13. Thankfully, we haven't used those yet, so we won't have to do any other pin allocations today. Uh, so let's get started. So, we're going to take, first thing we need to do is take the I.O. reference pin from the 
uh, board and attach it to the 5 volt. Palulu includes this helpful jumper cap for that. Uh, the next step is going to be to collect, connect the clock pin. Uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six pins down. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the clock pin. And then we have data in. It's next. Data out. And that's it. So we should have one, two, three pins left, and we have three pins left. Cool. So now we're going to take these pins and connect them to the Arduino. Clock pin goes to pin 13. The data out pin becomes the data in pin, and that will be pin 12, and the data in pin becomes the data out pin, and that becomes pin 11. Okay. Next up, we need to attach power and ground. Uh, power's a little tricky, so we'll leave that one for a second. We're going to attach the ground pin here to the spare ground pin over here. We've run out of ground pins. Interesting. I'll have to figure that one out in a minute. Um, and uh, power is uh, equally awkward because we've run out of power pins as well. Uh, we also need to attach the sleep pin. So the stepper driver has a sleep functionality which is enabled by default. We don't want it to be perpetually asleep otherwise it won't do very much motor driving. So we need to connect that here to just one of these Arduino pins. We'll use pin 8. Now let's figure out that ground pin. So, the Arduino is powered from the USB and the driver board is powered from the 12 volt supplies. Those don't share a common ground, so we are indeed going to need to get a ground pin. So we're going to have to take it off of one of these ground pins over here. To do that, we're going to have to splice this cable together. So we'll splice that off camera and we'll come back to that. So we've sorted out our ground problem. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we would need to splice together a cable to use a ground pin, as no new ones are available. Fortunately, we've been able to abuse the ground pin on the programming header of this Arduino. Uh, by using that, we've saved ourselves of resoldering a bunch of wires. Um, so let's connect up the last few pins. We need a chip select pin to connect uh, uh, to enable the SPI interface. So that can go to any old Arduino pin. We have nine available, so we're going to put that to use. Yeah, uh, These are getting difficult to plug in. Uh, next up, we have two more. Uh, we have two signals returning back from the board, which are going to go into our last two I.O. pins, and then that's the Arduino fault. So we have fault on the end here. This indicates when there's a problem and we need to stop you and we need to stop the driver. And we have stall, which indicates when we need to uh, which indicates when the motor's not turning. When we're driving the motor downward and we detect a stall, we can use that to determine if we've hit something, like a book. Um, so that concludes hooking up the motor driver. Now we can get writing some code. And that also fixes gravity. Uh, and we fixed gravity, which is um, not an expression I expected to say on this particular project, but we have fixed the gravity problem. Awesome. Right. Uh, last final touch, we'll get some tape on here, and we should be good to write some code and see if we can make this thing move. Awesome. I promise you it won't work first time. It never does. What are you doing? Uh, right now we're going to do some basic moves. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're no go. Nothing happened. Nothing happened.
Um, as you can see, I've switched from cola to cider. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had the uh, best ending to the evening. Um, what we've achieved so far is the new uh, stepper driver is plugged in, it's powered up, and theoretically it's working. However, we haven't successfully moved the box yet today. Um, we've rewritten all of the code um, to support the new driver, but uh, due to either a bug or some other issue that we've had difficulty tracking down, we haven't successfully made any movements today, which means we won't be able to flip a page today. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, and we're going to have to pick this up next time. Uh, for now, what we know is that we seem to be able to get data to the driver, but it isn't responding. Um, to debug a problem like this, you have to get the fancy tools out. So we'll be back next time. You'll probably get to see some oscilloscope action and a logic analyzer in play as well. Big fancy tools to solve big fancy problems. Uh, anyway, that wraps up this evening, and uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, and if you've just found the series, thanks for checking it out. Uh, this is just one episode in a longer series where I and Eon show steps in making uh, Libreflip the page-turning book scanner.